This is the first car I'll drive of 2019. Do you want a verbal warning? Are you ready to go? <laughs> So if you remember back when I made the off-road wheelchair and surprised Cambry with it, there was a lot of questions in that video on how she can drive a car. Cambry, can you drive a car? Yeah, I just use hand controls. Would you like to show everyone how you use these hand controls in a Tesla? Yeah, let's get started. So a lot of people think that Tesla Autopilot is a way to get from point A to point B, but that's not quite the case yet. It still requires, you know, a driver. And everything that Cambry needs to drive this car is in this bag. They're called hand controls, and I'm gonna show you how they work. So this is Cambry's first time actually driving the Tesla, and this particular style of hand controls, every hand control is a bit different. This is more of a temporary solution. The ones in my car are permanently bolted in, and they operate a little bit differently than these ones will. But they have the same basic principle. So right now, these temporary hand controls are set up around, there's a strap around the steering wheel. This one goes down to the gas pedal, and this one goes down to the brake pedal. So as she grabs this lever right here, pushes oh. in for the brake, and then she pulls back for the gas pedal, and that's how she can drive. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. I'm really nervous. Okay. This is the first car I'll drive of 2019. It's a good car to start with. All right, so your seatbelt's on, safety first. Explain to us how this setup is different than the setup in your Subaru. In my setup, if I push forward, it's the brake, and down is gas. But if I go down, nothing's gonna happen. So it's just, there's gonna be a learning curve. Are you ready? Yeah. Moment of truth? Okay, I'll explain how this works. Okay. All right, so in order to work this whole thing, make sure the brake's on, like it is right now, pressed in. Remember, pulling back towards you is the gas pedal. If you wanna put it into park, it's this button right here. If you wanna go into drive, you click it down hard all the way. And that gave us the D right there, which means we are in drive. And so if you release on the brake, like if you just let go of the hand controls for a second. You want me to? Yeah. Nothing's gonna happen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for telling me after. <laughs> And the reason nothing happened is because here on the display panel, we don't have creep enabled. So the car is never gonna roll forward by itself. Now remember the hand controls are pretty sensitive. So if you pull back slowly, then we'll start inching forward. And there's a chance I might not have to use the brakes as much as I would my Subaru. Exactly, because of the regenerative braking, but you'll, you'll get a feel for that as we go. All right. So there you go. Just, just taking baby steps, <laughs> 10 miles an hour. How does the regenerative braking feel? It's nice. I feel like I'm like I'm not applying the brakes, but it just feels like it's naturally slowing like I would yeah. with a brake. You got the hang of this? Yeah. So regenerative braking is actually pretty awesome. A, you never have to use your brake pads, so you hardly ever have to change out components on the Tesla because it's a super simple design. You have your internal motors and you have your batteries. There's no oil changes, nothing like that. The nice thing about it is that a, it's slowing down for you, but B, it's also charging the batteries in the Tesla. So you're actually gaining mileage as you're going down hills or you're coming to a stop. It's using that energy and putting it right back into the batteries again, which is pretty cool. You ready for the acceleration? I can just gun it. Yeah, you're right. Cameras are going. Do you want a verbal warning? Like, no. ready, set, go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very nice. That is sweet. So Cambry has the hand controls figured out pretty well. We're gonna take it on the freeway and we're gonna try out something called autopilot, which is kind of a game changer for the disabled community. And a lot of people, like I mentioned before, think autopilot's a way to get from point A to point B, but that's seriously not quite the case yet. Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, calls autopilot more of a hands-on system instead of a self-driving system. We're currently on the freeway and there's pretty well-defined lines on either side. And right here, there's a little gray indicator saying that the car is ready for autopilot. So we are gonna have Cambry just tap twice down on this joystick. This notification is now blue, and the car is driving itself. <laughs> this is, a, wow. How are you feeling? Anxious. <laughs> <laughs> she's watched me do this, but she's never been 
the one in control. This is a hands-on self-driving system. Cambridge still has to stay alert. So about every 30 seconds or so, the car will make sure that the driver is awake and alert by having them apply light force to the steering wheel. But the nice thing is that Cambry doesn't have to use her hand controls when she's in this autopilot mode right now. Her hands are completely free. Which is so weird, I'm always using my hands to drive in one way or another, like even with cruise control, like I can't, I can't be free with my hands. There's a curve in the road and the car is handling everything for us. It is going around this curve in the road and keeping us a safe distance from other cars. So you can see all the other cars in position around us. So you can see that car in front of us just passed, and you can see it on the screen right there. And then right here it says apply light force to the steering wheel, and then it lets you go back into hands-free mode again. Perfect. Very nice. Okay, so we're still in the Tesla. We're gonna try out autopilot again here on this road. Um, this one's a little bit more curvy, so we'll see if uh, Cambry likes it. All right, the green icon is there. Double tap down. All right, the road is turning. How are you feeling? The car's doing all the work for you. Yeah, well I got nervous the first time I turned it off. <laughs> so we have three lanes right now and because I know this road it's gonna end up in just two. It's now, oh I'm not even doing anything. I just did the signal and it moved us over to the lane. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> We're still in autonomous driving. I just signaled and it found an opportune time to turn. It's way easier than driving a normal car. So what are your thoughts on autopilot? It's a little nerve wracking right now, just because I'm not used to it, but it's pretty incredible. One of the reasons the Model 3 has such a big screen in the center is so that they can actually watch movies while they're driving down the road. Autonomous driving is still, you know, five or 10 years out. There's so many like regulatory approvals they have to go through. Right now, if you turn on autopilot, it'll still blow through stop signs and stop lights. So you still have to have a driver making sure the autopilot's not gonna mess up, but it's still, you know, pretty fun. The cool thing about owning a Tesla is that it gets constant updates. So right now where the autonomous driving is, you know, pretty much just on the freeway or on roads that have well-defined lines, it's going to get improved over the next five or 10 years. And this car already has the hardware to get those software updates. It has the cameras and the sensors all around the side. So when fully autonomous driving is finally legal, we won't have to go out and buy a new car. This one just receives a software update and it's ready to go. So one thing people might not think about is when they're parking, obviously handicap parking stalls usually have like a space next to them where the wheelchair can get in and out. Cambry, have you ever had any problems with parking before? Yeah, when all the handicap parking spots are taken, I'll have to go to a normal spot. I try and make as much room between the car and my car so that I can open the door wide enough to get out, but I can't guarantee that that car is gonna stay where it is, and when I come back, that there's not gonna be another car close to me. True, because her door has to be all the way open to get from her wheelchair into the driver's seat. Now normally we wouldn't think twice about this situation with the Tesla right behind us and a car right next to us, but with Cambridge, she can't fit through that tiny little gap. But Teslas have something called Summon, which is pretty cool. Elon has also said that you will be able to drive your car like a little remote control from your phone in the future. As of right now though, it's just forward and back when your phone's within range. And I'll show you how that works. So all we have to do is just jump down here into Summon. It gets the vehicle ready for us. And then we can go forward and reverse right now. So we're just gonna bring it forward. The car turns on. No one is driving right now. Totally controlling it from my phone. And it even steered a little bit to avoid me standing here, which is pretty cool. And there is nobody in the car. And plenty of space for me to get in. So Cambry, what do you think of the summon feature in the car? It's an awesome feature that opens up doors for more individuals with disabilities. Um, and I also think it kind of makes the car feel a little bit more lifelike. So it's fun. It's like a little puppy. Like, come here, Tesla. <laughs> one interesting thing about Teslas is if you walk into the Tesla dealership and just buy one outright, you don't get a whole lot of special perks. But if you use someone's code, usually there's a perk attached with it. Like currently right now, you get six months of free supercharging. That's like getting six months of free gas for your gas-powered car. It's pretty cool. The perks do change with time. So if you are interested in buying a Tesla, I will leave my code right here for you so you can get that six months of free supercharging and down in the video description. So not only are Teslas some of the quickest and most powerful cars on the market, but they're also the closest cars to the fully self-driving that is the future. And I'm excited to see where things go. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I'm sure Cambry will be there to answer them for you. And uh, thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you around.